to be your CCNA instructor for the week for this course. We are going to break this class down according to the OSI layer model. For those of you who are not familiar with the OSI layer model, I'll be covering it shortly on the board. The way this, this class will be structured, each layer of the OSI layer model will be covered in depth with all the protocols that pertain to it. There are some ancillary topics that do not fall exactly under any layer that are going to be covered at the end of the class or towards the end of the class. So how about we get started? Now, in the beginning, when the internet was new and people were just creating networks, if let's suppose some people in America got together and created a network according to the rules and designs of what they thought was plausible. And then at some point, somebody in another country, say Japan, came up with the same idea of creating a network and they did it according to their own rules and according to what they thought was plausible. Now, in the future, if there came a time where the American network needed to talk to the Japanese network, the chances of the two networks intercommunicating with each other are slim to none. Hence, a governing body came out with a set of rules that apply globally, that apply throughout the world. Now, this set of rules dictates how networks should be built and operated by everybody, which would make it easier for inoperability between networks. Now, this set of rules is called the Open System Interconnect Model or the OSI layered model. So let's write down the layers included in the OSI model. Open Systems Interconnect Model or the OSI model. Now, the OSI model is made up of seven layers. Layer one is your physical layer. Layer two is your data link layer. Layer three is your network layer. Layer four is your transport layer. Five is your session. Six is your presentation. And seven is your application layer. The way I structure this class is that I follow a layered approach. So we're going to start with layer one, and then we're going to cover everything pertaining to layer one. Then we're going to go to layer two and cover any, everything pertaining to layer th uh, two, and so on and so forth. Now, as a network engineer with the CCNA, your life will revolve around layer two, three, and four. Of course, you don't want to work in layer one because you don't want to be the cable guy after you get your CCNA. We're going to do a little bit of application layer stuff those ancillary topics that I talked about at the end of the class, layer f five and layer six, unless you are a programmer, has nothing to do with you. 